Welcome back to Thailand Chit Chat and today we have the Hoa Hin Report, basically finding out what's happening down in Hoa Hin. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, if you've got any comments, please for comments and please share. It allows us to build the, the channel. So let's just uh, see what's going on. How's it going, Richard? Yeah, What's happening down in Hoa Hin? Very well, getting busier and busier down here. Uh, we've been, yeah, there are a lot of activities. A lot of um, a lot of people doing cycles and runs and stuff like that. In fact, I took part in a run the other day over at Monsoon Valley. It was organized by a local foundation, the SOS Foundation, and they go around collecting food from hotels and supermarkets, and then they give it to the poor villagers up on the borders. Right. And they organized the charity run out at Monsoon Valley last weekend. So I thought I'd go, go and participate. It was only five kilometers and I walked it. I didn't run. <laughs> right. Okay. Sensible. Uh, <laughs> but it was beautiful because it's out in the middle of nowhere where the vineyard is up in the hills. Beautiful fresh air, vineyards uh, up over a couple of the hills and then down to see some elephants that they have there followed by a good breakfast <laughs> on me. So that raised some some. That was funds. part of the breakfast I take, yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I've actually been a bit sick because we've had a lot of air pollution down here, like you have in Bangkok. Yes. But I, I've been sick for actually about two months now. So just about, just about clear, but I'm um, still coughing a little bit. But that's okay, not to worry. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's. The, so, the, 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 I was. I was reading something about that, uh, and it basically, there's a. It's not just people say it's. It's uh, Myanmar and Cambodia and Laos. It's not. It's also in Thailand. So they're burning the the the, the stubs of the rice, yeah, and they're also doing the sugar cane, yeah, uh, sugar cane burning as well. Of course, you've got an awful lot of farms down in Hoa Hin area as well, and just further down, you've also got the plantations for uh, pineapples and and things like that. You got dole down there i'm not sure if they i'm not sure if they burn off because they're a big international company and they'd probably get slated for it but yeah it's a, mm. there's, there's been some some days even in bangkok where you know my nephew uh he's had to stay inside because he gets a nosebleed uh so i was asked you know for people who've got emphysema and things like that they've got to be very very careful uh so yeah if for, it's, it's only really from J January, February, early March, and then the, the, the burning stops. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully it will. Um, and you're right, they have been burning quite a bit locally. You know, you can see them late afternoon or, or whatever, or smell it in the air occasionally. But there were a couple of bad days a couple of months ago during the tennis when you could hardly see across town. You could not even see or just make out the hills that surround the town. Right. Um, you know, that was really unusual and very severe. And that, I think, is, was my downfall. Anyway, let's move you on. You've got the wind in the background, so you won't have so many issues now because it's also to do with the, the still air. Yeah. So, well, anyway, you've got go. a good breeze. Yeah. And I'm getting a shower. There's a fountain right behind me here. I've got a fountain here. Oh. Here. So, I've been getting a bit of a shower off that while we were talking. Okay. Um, anyway, this week, I gather it's been National Elephant Day earlier this week. Been celebrating the national <laughs> animal of uh, Thailand, of course, the white elephant. There you go, the white <laughs> elephant, which, yeah. The white elephant, yeah. Of course, there are quite a few elephants out on the country roads, uh, which have caused a lot of problems, as, as you can imagine, with some of the villagers and farmers. There's wild elephants, um, yeah. Not necessarily white elephants. No, but wild, big, wild, as in wild, as oh, in not. wild, yeah. yes. Mm. Oh, right. Sure. Okay. Uh, and they do come out, and some of them are a little bit, you know, um, nervous, and they can get a little bit nasty with cars if you get too close. <laughs> so you have to be very careful and give them a bit of a, a berth. But, you know, you can see them quite frequently as you drive in towards Palau or in inland towards the mountains. Right. It's a really nice aspect of living here. Um, yeah. What else? All these pesky elephants There's... coming down near the house. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got to be careful. You know, they can do a little bit of damage, oh, sure. particularly yeah. if they're hungry, right? Don't want that. 
a lot of other things going on. Blueport, the big shopping mall here, is holding their guitar festival competition uh, starting this coming weekend. Um, so there's, there's a new thing really with music. And I think a fairly new guitar school has opened up. And I think they're putting on presentations and, and really promoting that competition this coming weekend. Um, there are workshops and competitions, so that should be good fun. Yes. What else is going on? Well, True Arena, as ever, have always got things going on. And they're holding their uh, 10 days of open, open um, basically it's, it's an open session. You can go and use the gym or the tennis courts or play pickleball or use their facilities pickleball. free of charge. What is pickleball? Pickleball. That's a little bit like table tennis, but without the table. Um, <laughs> and it's very fast and okay. it's really good. Uh, it's ideal actually for slightly older people, pickleball. You have like a, they don't want me to call it a bat, but I'm going to call it a bat, okay? Like you have a table tennis, but it's a bit bigger and the ball is a bit bigger. Um, and it, it's very lightweight and it's very fast. So it's very pop, a popular sport, pickleball, uh, picked up uh, in the UK, in Canada, the US, and been quite big here in Thailand for the last couple of years. So you're that's making me feel old. You're making me that. feel old. I've never heard of a pickleball. Yeah. I thought well, it was something that was in a jar. Well, yeah. well, that's the wrong kind of pickle. <laughs> and I don't recommend you hit that with a bat. <laughs> Get messy. Anyway, True Arena have their, their open 10 days of, of free sessions. You have to register online at the website, but a lot of people will attend that. Great for the kids who are on vacation at the moment from school. Mm -hmm. A lot of children on holidays, so it's a great thing to keep them uh, you know, occupied and going. Other things going on up in Cha Am, there's a Bikini Beat Run. This coming Sunday the 19th. Are you doing it? I don't know much about that. I'm not going to participate. Otherwise, the place will be empty. <laughs> the Central Beach in Cha Am this coming 19th, which is a Sunday, which is great. Also on the same day, there's a bike for zero trash. So that's basically a, a 60-kilometer cycle coming up this Sunday around Pramboree which is south of Hua Hin. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. They've got eight viewpoints, and some of the funds go to support trash heroes to help reduce local waste and increase awareness about waste on the beaches. Right, can I, can so I inter that's I'll interject good. there? There's just a little article that I, I saw, yeah? Uh, and I thought yeah. it, was, it was really quite fascinating and, and where uh, all the locals that were sick of, uh, you know, pollution yeah managing the pollution on beaches yeah uh and uh you know not that i really noticed i think the beaches down there are absolutely fantastic uh and clean uh, but what they did was uh, when they when they have heavy rains uh, a lot of yeah. uh, sewage or, or, or stuff can go to can go to the beach so they decided to take control of it the residents and they proposed to the local government uh, uh on a a way where uh, the, when, when the uh, waste comes down, it's collected and it's pumped into a lift station and then sent to the treatment plant. A simple solution, yeah? Uh, and this, yeah. Is, this is dramatically reduced pollution, which is good because yeah. basically what what's they're, say, they're saying is, well, any government, not just Thailand, is, well, if they're not going to sort it out in any, in any serious fashion and it's been going on for two decades, we'll do it ourselves. So they went ahead and did it. Obviously, they need the permissions because they have to use the, the local authority waste treatment plant. And uh, they've taken initiative and it's more or less solved the problem, which was a, a great story. Well, that is a terrific story. And you can see photos of the improvements on the beach, can't you? In the Is it in Hoi today? Is that right? Yes, it was in Hoi Hin today. We'll put yeah. a, a little capture uh, right. up there. They can read the detail. Yeah, uh, But I just thought it was yeah. very, very enlightening. Uh, story of people taking control of their, their their own environment. I think that's a terrific story and fantastic. So basically the items that I just mentioned are all taking place over the next few days. In a couple of weeks, uh, there'll be the Hohen Boat Show, uh, which will be at the marina, which is down at Paramburi, right. just south 
of uh, Hui Hin. Um, and they've got a really good size marina down there now. And people can sail private boats into the marina and moor up and stay. Uh, I gather there are boats there that you can charge to rent, whatever. Um, and they've got a, a boat show, so you can go and have a look at all different kinds of boats. Um, I think we're going to be going down there and taking a look at that I'm in sure a couple you will. of weeks. That'll be on the 24th, 25th, 26th of March down in Pranbury. And it's the first time they've held a boat show down there. Right, okay. So it's going to, it's going to be pretty big, yeah? Yeah, I think it'll be quite a good size. Hopefully we'll find out more about that and talk about it in the next video with you. Right. Because I'm going to go down and explore that one. Yeah. That's so, that, that, you know, that's a lot great. of things going on. And I've only touched a few things that are taking place here. Um, I was talking with Jonathan from Huahin today a couple of days ago. And he and his other half were taking part in, a, in, a, in another run. I think they had to run and cycle and swim. The triathlon kind yes. of thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Really amazing. So there are all, you know, there are a lot of activities taking place, which is really refreshing because, you know, it's really getting people geared up into keeping fit and staying relatively healthy. So as far as the tourism is concerned down, down there, is, are you finding uh, it's an awful lot busier? Mm -hmm. And what kind of tourists are, are, are going, are arriving? Yeah, still, yeah, uh, are picking up for sure. Yeah, the streets are busier. Um, you're getting a few more Europeans in particular, I would suggest. Uh, some Russian tourists. Uh, many have come into Phuket and come up to Hua Hin. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. Um, you know, the place is just feeling a little busier. Center of Hua Hin, Soy 94 has turned into a bit of a a nighttime uh, place, lots of bars and pubs and dancing areas, and and that seems to be growing and developing. I wouldn't say it's got actually busy yet, but it looks like it, it could well develop and take off into quite a popular area. Maybe not so much this year, but into the high season towards the end of the year. And what, what about, is, is it just a general more positive feeling uh, in, in Hohen overall? Oh, absolutely. Great. Yeah, the shops are quite busy. You know, you're actually, the main Pekasem Road is quite busy to drive down most days. Um, you know, and the shopping malls feeling busy and, and are busy. Restaurants are doing well. But still, it's not really jam-packed solid yet. You know, it's not... It's probably nice. It was nice that way. Years ago. <laughs> you know, but it's, but it's certainly improving. And there's a lot more development as well property development just inland a little bit housing um, condominiums a couple more hotels at the radio station where, where i'm at we're seeing more advertising coming on more hotels participating and, and joining us and that's been quite good news from our point of view of course yeah so it does show and indicate a positive trend that's that's good that's good because uh, i think we're, we're feeling that across across the board uh, things are things yeah. are, are, are picking up, and 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 do you have this? Do they have the same problem from restaurateurs and hotels of getting staff just now? Because I keep hearing that I from other so. people. Because you know you, you were mentioning before people who couldn't get work, and there was a lot of poverty, and people couldn't eat, and things like that. So is is that more or less solved now, or 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 not? No, I think there's still a, quite a shortage of good quality staff. You see, people that are in poverty and struggling have generally not had the experience to work in a nice restaurant. So, you know, the poor remain poor, unfortunately. Right. Um, and I think there is a shortage of really good staff here. Right. Okay. So what they're going to have to do is uh, get to a point where instead of trying to find the, the best of the best, is actually take, take people and train them up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and now actually isn't a bad time to do that before it, really gets jam-packed yeah and there are new places new restaurants are open. you know i've just been invited to the opening of a new indian restaurant on friday for example it's going to have quite a big launch a big splash and stuff and that's unusual for a restaurant right um 
And so there are, you know, places are, are popping up and people are trying new things. There is investment and there is interest in, you know, developing the whole region. And I think that's very positive. A few days ago, uh, I was at the Royal Coast Riviera Club meeting and we had representatives from the Pechaburi Tourism Authority of Thailand there and the municipality there. Uh, they were talking about the development, obviously, of tourism. And they are certainly seeing an increase in numbers. Um, and of course, everybody was asking them all the usual questions. People were asking them all the regular questions like, when's the airport opening for international flights? They couldn't really answer that because it's a senior level decision. But there are more domestic flights starting for sure. Um, when's the railway coming into Huahin, the new one? Well, they're saying that will definitely open next year, 2024, the new twin track railway and the new railway station. That is so oversized for such a small town, this massive great station. Oh. It's, it's quite an incredible feat of engineering. Um, you know, somebody's had great plans and developed it. So that will open during the course of next year, for sure. I think part of the reason some things are being delayed is because you've got the elections coming up in early May, yeah? Uh, yeah, maybe. And some decisions are not going to be made until they know who their, who their next boss is going to be, yeah? So that's what I'm hearing from, uh, from, from people for different developments, yeah? Uh, oh, so I agree. I think there are going to be several decisions, um, you know, and some development just on hold for a little while. Yeah. But I don't think that'll affect us too much down here. Well, I was told, I was, I think, I was told you know, that normally you know, what happens is uh, they have the election uh, and then there is uh, the, the development of the government. Yeah? Uh, and then normally there's about six months or something like that till everything is actually sorted out and a handover, etc. is done. Yeah? They, they say that the, this is why some projects are put, are, are put on hold because they don't know who's coming in and what rules may change or, or whatever. Yeah? Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. But that'll certainly affect, you know, government and local authority related things and development. Still no word yet on what's going to happen downtown around the jetty area where they closed a lot of restaurants and bars and places quite close to the Hilton down there. Right, yes. Uh -huh. There's still no official word of how that is being developed and nobody seems to want to talk about that just yet. So maybe we'll hear about that after the election. Okay, I was speaking uh, on, on our party report. Uh, I was speaking to Craig, and they were saying about golf, and a lot of the prices of golf have gone up. Uh, are you facing the same issue? I mean, you don't have as many golf courses as Paria Rayong, but you've got a few. Yeah. Uh, so, is there is there any effect of prices going up to cope with the the, the, the higher seasons? They, they say catching up on the loss of uh, COVID, but some of the clubs, the the, the golf. Club yeah. groups, yeah, have been complaining that the prices have gone up and uh, they're, they're, they're quite upset. Is well, that the same case? I believe you're probably correct. I'm not really aware of the prices of golf uh, golf courses. I'm, I'm not really a golfer. Um, but I know the local Banyan golf course is, is uh, having quite a major event next month right. uh, to try and woo people in and get some more interest. Um, but that's, I think that's an annual event that they have. Um, but in terms of pricing, to be honest, I'm just not too sure. Uh, but the golf courses I know are still fairly busy. Local people still playing golf regularly. Yeah. So it's good. So it doesn't sound as if you get the same issues that they've got in Patia, uh, which is which is good to mm. hear. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So is, is there anything else happening down there you want to share with us? Not really. I think I think uh, you know Huhin's doing okay. Um, we're going to continue to grow. Our little radio station is good. I've got, I'm really pleased to have an intern come to join me for two months, which right. is nice. Somebody from Canada who's just coming over to get some media experience and to help us produce things like news and features. Good. So that'll be good for the radio station. And I must also thank David Watson and Royal Coast Review, which is the online news local news rollercoasterreview.com check it out and all the information that i've mentioned today you can find in there as well right along okay, with good. in uh, you know, today 
Okay, listen, thanks very much, well, Richard. Okay, <laughs> I'm also... Always good to chat to you, Andrew. Lovely, okay, I'll speak thank to you, you later. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you very much, everybody, for uh, watching the show. I hope you found it uh, of, of use and you can you can attend some of the, the events. It seems a lot of things seem to be happening at the moment. Hohen, Paria and Bangkok. We'll have something about Bangkok very, very soon. Uh, it just seems Hohen and Paria are more interesting than Bangkok sometimes. So thank you very much. And uh, please subscribe and uh, comment. And if you get any thoughts that you, uh, you want to pass across or anything you want to know about, just let us know. Thanks very much. I'll speak to you later. Bye-bye.